This video is made possible by my patrons on Patreon. Hello everyone, my name is Ziamaro and welcome to Battlebright Sage. So, as many of you know by now, starting in Season 3 there will be no more 2v2 in solo queue. I've said this in another video, but it's worth reiterating that you will still be able to play 2v2 in casual, and you'll still be able to play 2v2 with a pre-made. If you really don't like 3v3, there are other people who share your sentiment, so I would highly recommend teaming up with one of them and queuing as a pre-made. However, after Season 2 ends on Monday, you won't be able to play 2v2 in solo queue anymore. This means that 3v3 will be the only solo queue mode in Ranked. So, if you're someone who really doesn't want to play with a team, let's give you a quick primer on how to play 3v3. So, before we get into the differences, let's go through the similarities between the two modes. First off, cooldown management. Cooldown management is just as important in 3v3 as it is in 2v2. This may even be an advantage you can take from your 2v2 experience. Some 3v3 players, especially in lower diamond and below, don't have great cooldown management or reactions. They have their other skills down, which is why they are where they are, but I find that 3v3 players in the same league as 2v2 players tend to have slower reactions. For example, say a thorn throws entangling roots at you. A platinum 2v2 player is more likely to dodge that than a platinum 3v3 player. As you get to upper diamond and champion, it does even out though. Secondly, aiming and dodging. Again, there's a bigger emphasis on aiming and dodging in 2v2, so that's another advantage you can take from your experience. I would be willing to bet a Platinum from 2v2 has marginally better aim and dodging skills than someone from the same rank in 3v3. Now, don't misinterpret what I'm saying here. 3v3 players can aim and they do have decent cooldown management. It's just that 2v2 places a higher demand on those skills. So don't go into 3v3 thinking you can outplay people with your insane footsie skills alone. And the reason for that is there are a few skills that you haven't developed due to playing 2v2 exclusively. Firstly, positioning. This is by far the biggest issue 2v2 players have in 3v3. In 2v2, if you see someone on the enemy team burn a cooldown, you can chase them into infinity. It doesn't really matter where you're chasing them to, just chase them and keep hitting them until they're forced to use their escapes again and then chase them some more. I know not all 2v2 players play this way, but the ones who will have trouble in 3v3 will be the ones who do do this. Don't get me wrong, with some teammates you can still go super aggro in 3v3. If you have a team comp like Freya, Esmo and Older, there's a good chance you can still play the constant pressure game. However, chasing the enemy into spawn isn't the norm in 3v3. It's much more situational, and here's why. So, let's say you're up against Alicia, Rygon and Blossom. You're playing Freya. The Alicia plays far up at the start to poke a bit, your teammate manages to force her space with a snipe, and she falls back behind her team. In 2v2, this is your cue to space at her, right? But the problem in 3v3 is, if Alicia's teammates aren't already engaged with someone else, there's a good chance they'll just turn tail and go for you. Now imagine the Rygon double dragon palms you into their spawn, or Blossom EX spaces you back. There's no way for you to get back out now. You're now in a 1v3 and you may not have an other side or portal to get you back out. Okay, some teammates may take your aggressive engagement as an opportunity to push in, but it really depends on what champion they're playing. If I'm playing Paloma, I physically can't keep up with you, and especially if you're behind an enemy, I can't even heal you. If I'm playing older on the other hand, count me in, I'm gonna space in and shoot some mofos. But you can't count on your team always following your lead. There are three of you remember. Sometimes you've got to follow what your team is doing. If they want to play safe and secure orbs, you need to enable that because it's a viable strategy. And then there's the other side of the same coin. When it comes to target priority, you want to focus people who are out of position, not just people who have no cooldowns. If someone has no cooldowns, but they're in a defensive position, they might not be a good target. If someone has no cooldowns, and they're literally right in your team, now that's when you blow all of your stuff to kill them. And that takes me to my second point, burst windows. So maybe you're thinking, well, if I'm not supposed to chase someone when they have no cooldowns, how am I ever supposed to kill someone? And the answer is, you need to force them into a bad position when they have no cooldowns. For example, there are a lot of champions who can pull someone towards their team after they space. Esmo with his right click, Thorn with his Q, and Freya with her counter when it gets hit. Alternatively, you can catch someone in some CC and then pop your big hitters while they can't respond. And that's what a burst window is. It's a moment, however brief, that someone is both in a position where you can focus them and has no cooldowns to respond to your burst. 
and in 3v3 that's what you're always looking for. So those are the main things to watch out for when coming from 2v2. If you're new to 3v3 you should spend most of your time learning to position correctly and learning how to identify a burst window. But let's give you some more quick tips. Ground targeted abilities are really great in 3v3. It's actually kind of funny but quite often people will blow their space to avoid my E as older even if they don't have a time bomb on them. Especially if they space into a bad position that can be a great setup for my team. So quite often I'll throw my ground targeted stuff at a ranged DPS or support who seems to be free casting and if nothing else it takes the pressure off my team for a bit. And that's actually something to watch out for in 3v3 free casting ranged DPS. You should not allow this to happen. In 2v2, supports and melee rule the roost. In 3v3, ranged DPS really come into their own. If you allow an Alicia or Jamong to do their thing, they will single-handedly destroy your team. You don't necessarily have to focus them to prevent them free casting, but you need to give them something to worry about. If they're in a bad position, then by all means just switch targets and focus them. If they're playing super safe and poking from max range, you can just do what I mentioned before, throw ground targeted stuff at them or CC them. Another tip is play safe when you have no cooldowns. Most champions have a rhythm to the way they play. So if you're experienced with your champion, no matter if that experience comes from twos or threes, you'll know what I mean. For example, Freya has three defensive abilities, space, E, and Q. Each of them can protect you against different things. For example, Q can protect you from projectiles, E can protect you from a single big burst like a snipe, and space can help you escape sustained damage such as Jamong's rain of arrows. Depending on what you're up against, you need to know when to back off and when to stay in. Say you're against an older or Esmo and it's getting to that time of the round where everyone has ultimates in their back pocket. If you're out of iframes, you want to get the hell out until those cooldowns come back. Force them to dive deep if they want to catch you with no iframes. Sure, they might just do it, but that puts them in a bad position too. So one thing I see a lot of 2v2 players saying is, I was 1v2, how could you not kill their melee 2v1? In 2v2, I know it can sometimes devolve into two 1v1s either side of the map. But in 3v3, if you're 1v2 and die, don't blame your team for not killing the enemy melee faster than their team killed you. Just position better. 3v3 is all about taking the advantages you can get, and walking into a 1v2 is not to your advantage. If you can go into a 1v2 and do more damage than you take, more power to you. But if you die doing it, that's not your team's fault, that's your fault. Finally, let's quickly talk about team comps. When in doubt, just go one melee, one ranged, one support. There are some specialist comps that can go two ranged, one support, or two supports, one melee, but the vast majority of viable comps are one of each. Team comps are actually one of the best bits of 3v3. There are some support DPS combos that don't work very well together, but on the whole, you can throw anything together and it will work okay for solo queue. I've actually been doing a comp spotlight series that is entirely focused on 3v3 comps, and I made a playlist for them, so go check those out if you like. Honestly, I could carry on with quick tips for 3v3 forever, but you know what? We have a whole community with a wealth of knowledge too. So if you're a 2v2 player who's made the switch to threes, please comment down below with what helped you make the jump. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please feel free to subscribe for more battle right guides, news, and discussion. If you'd like to help support the channel and get some unique rewards, then head over to patreon.com slash battlerightsage. And don't forget to check out twitch.tv slash battlerightsage. Until next time, thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.